Welcome everybody, this is SharePoint Patterns and Practices webcast and this time we're going to talk about how to apply a custom theme to a modern SharePoint site. My name is Vesa Juvonen, I'm a Senior Program Manager from Microsoft and SharePoint Engineering and with me today as the secondary, secondary uh, presenter uh, is Waldek. So Waldek, will you do the quick intros as well? Sure thing. Hi everybody, my name is Waldek Mastigas, I am Office Development MVP, I work at Rancor and today, as Vesa said, we will talk about applying custom themes to modern SharePoint sites. So do do tell themes. Okay, the themes. Yes. Okay. So let's actually concentrate on what we will go through first. What are we going to actually cover today? So we're talking about the new modern themes, uh, which are based on this tenant level gallery. So you're able to add your own custom themes to your, to your tenant level, and then those modern themes will be exposed for the modern sites. So essentially for the modern team sites or the group associated team site or for the communication site. Technically, these modern sites actually do support classic themes as well. If you remember the um, SP theme file in the theme gallery, but uh, this is the new modern way of handling uh, the colors within the site. Now, this works in a way that uh, we have, like mentioned, we have the standard level uh, centralized gallery. You can use PowerShell or an APIs to actually set your additional theming uh, options to the gallery itself. And then the theme options will be exposed within the UI uh, for the end users. Um, uh, you can use PowerShell commandlets, are, which are available from the September 2017 version forward, or the REST APIs, which are uh, REST or CSM APIs, which are also available within the SharePoint Online. Now, how do we? What does it actually mean? So, in technique, well, basically, what it means is that you can use our theme generator, or you can create uh, your theme without uh, the theme generator as well. But the theme generator is a pretty convenient tool for that. So you can create your custom theme, which is defining the colors, um, which are relevant for your branding. And from a custom theme generator, you can then copy paste the definition and use that to apply the, the setting or setting the be available within a tenant level. Right now, currently, uh, when we're recording this uh, webcast, which is uh, October 2017, there is no REST API or a CSM API to apply a theme programmatically to a site. Uh, but that's going to be addressed uh, in the future. So right now, it's more around providing an option available for the end users, and they can actually select the theme for the site. Or in the future, like mentioned, you can programmatically do that, or you can associate to apply a theme or action, also the site recipe or site design. Uh, but that all of those are coming in the future uh, for SharePoint Online. Good. Any actions at this point related on quick run through of the well, what is it all about? So make pinpointing. Uh, there's two resource URLs. Uh, resource URLs on the slide. Uh, KMS ASP uh, site theming that points to the Microsoft Docs uh, on docs.microsoft.com uh, slash SharePoint documentation, where we actually explain all of these options. How does it actually work? And PowerShell uh, command lines. The second uh, thing, AKMS SP theme builder is a tool within the internet where you can actually create your custom themes uh, in, a, in an easy way. So you can actually use those uh, color pickers to set the themes and, uh, and colors uh, in place, and then you'll get the definition of the theme. Right now, uh, in the theming side, we do not support, for example, applying a font or changing the font on the site, but that's coming up uh, relatively soon as well as part of the, the, theme, the evolution of the modern theming as well. Huge. Any questions at this point, Waldek, from your side? Well, yes, of course, of course. You talk for the whole ten minutes, uh, <laughs> <laughs> right? So to go back a step, um, so modern themes apply only to modern sites, correctly? Correct. 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 Yes. Correct. Okay. Um, and you mentioned that they are only available online, as we now now recorded. Correct. Correct. That is correct. The situation is that, might be uh, changing, obviously, whenever the SharePoint 2019 is coming out uh, in next year, 2018. So. Right, and I guess I'm not sure if you can, if if you know about anything, uh, anything about that already. If it's fair to say that whenever modern sites will arrive on premises, we'll also be able to apply themes to them. Most likely, is, is that, yes. Is that we can't, we, a fair we, assumption? Well, it's a fair assumption, uh, and we could say that most likely that is the situation. But I can't sign off the full list of on-premises feature at this point. So, of course, of course, right. So, in the past, we could have we could do a few things with themes, right? And now you mentioned that we can only set the colors. Uh, so, things like setting a font 
is yeah. not available. Are, are there are there any other uh, things that we cannot that we could have done in the past and we cannot do now in modern themes? In the if we compare the last classic, let's say SP theme uh, functionality and the modern theme. In the SP theme, it was all about colors um, and it was the font and then the background image. Uh, in the modern right now, in the modern themes, it's all about just colors. So you but, cannot actually set the, the the font or a background color for the uh, background image for the site, which is a good thing. And to is there realize? Um, and, and is there a way to include? Uh, CSS block so that we can either resize or rearrange things on a page? No, that's not possible either. No, not supported. Okay. And and is there that a part of the plan or is that a thing that doesn't fit the concept and will never be a part of themes? Well, in um, the sense that 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 we can already envision what never means, right? Because uh, things... yeah, it's it's obviously debatable. What we want to do in the in the in the modern experiences is to provide more railed experiences, and railed experiences mean that it's not about you hacking and adding adding uh, stuff in the DOM structure or just adding a random CSS and overwrite the styles. We want to give you more structural way of doing customization. So I cannot say never never um, that we would never ever ever expose an option to add a, a custom CSS uh, on the site from a UI perspective, but who knows? Um, most likely that's not going to be there. It's not really the way we think on how do we customize SharePoint in the future or how do we extend okay. and modify the SharePoint behavior in the future. Right. And then one last thing you, you mentioned is that currently there is no REST API available to programmatically set themes. So what advice do you have for people who use remote provisioning or some other means of structured and re uh, repeatable deployment? Like how can they deal with themes? So for time being, uh, that is a clearly a challenge, and this is this is a gap which we know uh, which we need to address from an engineering perspective, and that, that's going to be addressed relatively fast because we absolutely acknowledge that uh, the typical scenario for remote provisioning cannot be achieved with this setup uh, for the time being. Um, unless you use uh, site designs which are not actually available yet either so but the functionality is there uh, that be the, the behavior is there from a ui perspective already in sharepoint online technically you could actually have a look on on the the native out of the box apis which we used um with using fitler or whatever that's not however uh, documented or let's say in quotes uh, how would I put it it's not really the supported and uh, future proof way for third parties to apply a thing and that's why we want to have a, a more structural API in future to make that happen that's not however right now there okay um, any ideas in what time frame can we expect it is it by the end of the year somewhere next year well, the time frame discussions are always no helpful in a webcast because somebody <laughs> might be watching this webcast in 2020. And, and, and then if we say by end of the year, uh, what does it mean, end of the year 2020? No. Uh, right now, when we're recording this webcast in October 2017, uh, that apply a theme capability is not available. It might be available by end of the year. We don't know. We, can, we, are, we, we haven't actually set uh, that on the stone uh, right now. Gotcha. So how about we see themes in action? Let's actually have a look on this one in action. So let me uh, jump to the UI. Um, and here we go. We have a classic office. Well, classic. We have a modern. Uh, I was saying. I was almost saying classic modern theme site. Um, so we have a <laughs> <laughs> Office 365 group associated theme site, which is a modern theme site in SharePoint Online, um, and it's a group site essentially. Uh, it is a public group. Oh, I haven't done any modifications on this one. Just created the site. So now, if I go to the uh, gears menu uh, and uh, if I click the change and the look we can actually see uh, the different themes which are available within this channel. So we can see the out-of-the-box themes, which is the blue, orange, red, purple, green, and gray, uh, and dark yellow and dark blue. Uh, and then we can see one custom theme there as well, which is uh, the custom uh, cyan theme. And if I click any of these, you can actually see the, the theme getting applied uh, automatically and immediately on the side as well. Um, the changes, obviously, if you're just modifying, uh, for example, this this out of the box, uh, let's say, it's, uh, blue or orange or red themes, you can see that the impact of the change isn't that huge. If I go to a dark, you can see the impact of the theme in a much bigger, bigger way. Or if so I go to my if, custom if style, you would, yeah, yeah. If so, if you change a, a a theme, would it also by default already 
uh, apply to, let's say, a web part you build or extensions you build? Or is there anything that we have to do explicitly being developers to enable uh, the theme from the side being applied also to the web part or extension? Um, it, it slightly depends how the, the web part has been implemented, but by default, if you're following up on the on the styling guidelines, um, and please do check them, uh, we will absolutely double check that everything is up to date on the docs.microsoft.com around them. Um, this should impact your theming, uh, your um, output as well. Again, it slightly depends how your web part is being implemented and how the theming model is being done. But we'll get back more details on that one uh, in the documentation, no doubt. Cool. Now, uh, if I uh, one option here might be, and, and well, obviously for enterprises it might be super super important that hey, okay, so that's cool. We have out of the box themes which are small modifications, but I, actually I don't want any of these to be actually exposed. So I, I only want to have my custom Contoso exposed. So how would I do that? Um, if I flip uh, quickly to PowerShell, um, I've already connected uh, to my admin site using the the September 2017 version or newer version of the PowerShell uh, commentlets. I'm going to use uh, the get height default themes uh, commentlet, which is a funky name because it's missing the SPO prefix. So that's going to be fixed in the future releases as well. But if I run that one, you can see that our uh, value, a tenant level value for height default themes is now false. Uh, I can set that to be uh, true. Uh, so we want to actually hide those themes and let's actually do that. So now that means that if I get back in here, let's close the, the UI. And let's actually get that one open again. We can see that we only have the one option available, which is relevant for the company. So you can actually control what are the themes options which people can actually choose from, which makes a lot of sense. Now, um, what else uh, can we do in the in the PowerShell? So when we kind of use PowerShell for the for the example uh, scenario, like mentioned, we do have a REST API and CSN APIs for many of these as well. Right now, if I'm interested on in getting uh, the details of an existing theme, uh, I can actually execute this get SPO theme uh, and, and uh, provide a name for it. There is a small bug on this one, uh, un unfortunately, as well. Um, so if you would like to get a list of all themes, you might assume that you run the get SPO theme command. Unfortunately, the name is actually mandatory, uh, so um, you can't do that. So there's no way using the PowerShell to get a list of all of the themes when we are recording the video. This will be evolving in the future as well. Another thing that I, that, that I wanted to ask, and I think that we weren't really clear about that at the start, are themes being applied across the whole tenant, or can it be also, so can you create a new theme only for your site? Um, Yes, so these are stored in a tenant level. So it really doesn't matter where in my site I will be, I will see the same options. So this is not controlling the theme options in a site scope um, or what's being exposed as an option uh, in a site level. It is the tenant level setting. Um, what are we actually doing here? Right, so in other words, site collection owner cannot create a theme exclusively for their own site. Correct, that is correct. Yes. Gotcha. This is a tenant level operation. I will need to connect to the tenant admin um, and then I can modify the team settings um, and options. Um, now, if you're interested uh, on, on the REST APIs as well, uh, there's a quick uh, example here um, that there is a, a un, uh, underscore API theme manager get tenant theming options, which will actually list all of the all of the custom themes which are available within the tenant. So in here, we can also see that there's only one uh, theme available, which is called a custom cyan. And now. How would I then create a custom theme, or unless you had a question well, like, around this one? Uh, well, so the one thing I wanted to, to say is that initially we said that there are no APIs, but there are, there are APIs, but as, as you can see here, the operation is only get, right? So we cannot create new themes or deploy themes via REST APIs. We can only get whatever is there uh, um, already, correct? That's, that's not actually correct. So the correct statement is that, yes, you can use REST APIs and CSM APIs to create new themes to be available. There's, however, right now in October 2017, we do not have a REST API or CSM API to apply a theme to the site. Apply the theme, yes, correct. Yes, okay, yes. So you can create 
create but not apply a theme to the site. Correct. Gotcha. So the operation that the user is doing here currently is not exposed as an API. So clicking the save. Um, so that's not exposed. Now, okay. how would I create a custom theme? Uh, so let's go to our custom theme designer or theme generator. And this is hosted in the Fabric site. Uh, so we can actually create a quickly a theme here. So let's do something funky. Uh, let's do, for example, orange primary color. Uh, blue uh, body text and what do we want to have a background color something it's a rainbow rainbow uh, color that's not too bad actually um, if I scroll down we can actually see how the fabric controls are behaving based on that theme as well uh, so you can actually see um, the behavior and, and how to how your settings on the theme level are impacting the, the controls. And now in here we have the JSON output, SAS output, and the PowerShell output, which we can use for creating the theme and getting that option available in a tenant level. So in this case, I'm going to copy the PowerShell one. I'm going to move back on my uh, script. Uh, in the script, uh, I have already added here uh, the needed uh, setup of script. So this is directly available in the documentation. So let me actually get the old uh, way. Let's get away from it. There we go. Backspace help. And let me paste in uh, that uh, setup uh, from the from the thing generator. Save. And let's actually create this as a name of Contos Rainbow. So let's do that, and I'm going to actually activate the whole thing uh, all the way down in here, and I'm going to do an F8, essentially execute. That's now executed. So if I go now and back on the site, group site, and we go to the uh, change to look functionality, we can see that we have two options now available. That one was the one which we currently use, which was the custom cyan, and I can actually get my Contoso rainbow uh, theme to be selected. Clearly. I'm not capable, I'm not a good guy for doing UI designs, color selection at least. This isn't too bad actually, this is pretty cool. This is Brazilian colors, something like that, yeah. Cute, any questions on, the, on this one? Well, it looks great. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> you. No, I guess that, I, I guess we uh, went through all of it. Um, sure. Explained how you can manage them, what the purpose is, what you can, what you cannot do today. Um, as of the recording day, we showed how you can create a theme. Um, no, I don't think I have anything else to ask. That's good. That's always good uh, for a quick <laughs> webcast. So to be fair, the functionality um, is relatively new. It was released in Ignite 2017. Uh, so it is the first version of the functionality. And there will be more capabilities absolutely on this one in the future. Uh, that's why the capabilities are quite limited for the time being. But it's already giving a good, uh, good let's say, clarity on the direction where we are heading around uh, the theming, as an, as an example. But I think that's it uh, for this one. Uh, please follow up on the docs.microsoft.com and our social media whenever there's new new capabilities on the theming options available. We'll absolutely announce them properly so you'll be up to date on, on uh, those uh, settings. But I think that's it. Thanks everybody for watching and we'll come up with a new webcast sooner or later. Thank you. Bye. <laughs>